Hello, welcome to our new devotion today. Uh, we're just grateful for this opportunity to get together while we're apart. Some announcements as we begin. We hold in our prayers this week, Paul and Gail McKim, Burl Ruth, Shirley Emmerich, Carol Lape, Chris Bayshore, Rod Spies, John Hopman, Kathy Shirk, Bob Gregory, Barb Kessler, Norman Forey, Mary Helena, John Fraunfelter, Eugene Moyer, Grace Wenrick, Chris Kennedy, Anna Smith, and Bob Dutt. And of course, all those families who are fighting their way through the fires in, in California and the hurricanes down south, and any natural disasters for that matter. We worship Sunday, 9 a.m. out in the lawn by the pavilion, weather permitting, bring your chairs, masks, and keep your distance. If we have to cancel because of weather, we'll do that by 8 a.m., and we'll put a message on the answering machine as well as on Facebook. We also live stream it if you can't be with us in person, and then we record it and upload it to YouTube later. Um, noon devotions continue Monday through Friday on Facebook Live. Next week we are off on Monday for Labor Day, so it'll be Tuesday through Friday next week. Hold an evening prayer, Facebook Live, 7.30 on Wednesday evenings. Thursdays at 6.15, we have Making Music on Facebook Live. And then Tuesdays, beginning next Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're going to resume our Bible study on the uh, text from the Sunday Sermon. And if you're interested in connecting on Zoom for that, email Pastor Jen to sign up. She'll get you the link. If you're in need of material or spiritual support, give us a call here at the church. We'd love to hear from you and help you in any way that we can. Uh, your Trinity family is here to help you. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, you made us in your image and likeness. Help us to understand that our identity in you supersedes all other concepts of identity that we humans create, particularly those that divide us. Through your Holy Spirit, call us into a life in Christ that leads to faithful discipleship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two passages of scripture for you today. First one from Genesis, the first chapter. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then a reading from Galatians, the second chapter. St. Paul is writing to the Galatians. St. Paul writes, And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So who are you? I mean, if somebody asked you to describe yourself, what would you tell them? I guess if somebody asked me that question, I'd say I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm a Caucasian of German descent. I'm the son of Vincent and Etta. I'm a graduate of Cocalico High School and Penn State University. Um, I'm a Lutheran Christian. I'm a seminary student. I'm a vicar. I'm an Eagle Scout. I'm a veteran of the Marine Corps, I'm the husband of Jan, I'm the father of Abigail, and so on. You get my point. You know, and in addition to those sorts of things, if I asked you, you might throw in there your political party affiliation. You might talk about your hobbies, the sports teams that you support, and those that you really pledge allegiance to, like, I'm a Nittany Lion. You know, and all these things that we might mention, and that I mentioned, they reveal our concept of our identity, who we think we are. And as we look around in our world today, we see how these identities that we put upon ourselves, well, they seem to drive our politics. Our identity politics seems to be the cause du jour. And all our politics are driven by our understanding of who we are and who we are not. It focuses on our differences instead of our commonality. And it leads to much division and often verbal abuse. I mean, try to have a conversation about gun safety with someone who equates their identity with their belief about guns on either side of the issue. Or try to have a conversation about abortion with someone who equates their support or opposition to abortion as part of their very identity. 
Likewise, try having a conversation about economic systems with someone who equates their support of capitalism or of socialism with who they are. Or how about trying to discuss, particularly in this time, the role of government, protests, and speech with someone who equates their identity with their partisan political membership? It's darn near impossible. And very often, anything that conflicts with our beliefs will be seen as an attack on us and our identity, on our very being. And you know, when we're attacked, well, that's when our survival instincts sort of kick in. And we either run or hide, or we lash out in defense. It's become a pretty sad state of affairs. It seems we cannot have a conversation anymore about a controversial topic. In the church, we often hear complaints about being too political when we lift up issues we face in the world and, and how Jesus teaches us to respond. Folks, Jesus was political. It got him killed. He wasn't political in the partisan way that we think of, a Democrat, Republican, conservative, or liberal, but he was political. He raised up the important issues of social justice and religion that existed in his time. And he did it for the betterment of the common life. Jesus didn't protect people from hard conversations because it might cause them to feel uncomfortable. His goal, rather, was to promote self-reflection, a change of heart. Folks, have we tied up our identities so close with our beliefs and affiliations that we can no longer have deep and uncomfortable conversations that might lead to growth and healing? Have we opted to be stuck in our tribal way of thinking? Have we traded our true identity for some kind of feeling of safety? Well, it sure seems like it. But all these things we say about ourselves are not our true identity. Our true identity is that every human being is created in the image and likeness of God. And as such, every human being is a beloved child of God. Everything else, that's a human invention. What if we saw all other people as God sees them? But better yet, what if we saw Jesus in the eyes of every other human being? Now that, that way of thinking would change everything. The beliefs about others, our communication about tough topics, our treatment of others, and even the concepts of our own identity. Folks, we are children of God who follow Christ. And as such, we are called to let Christ live in us and act through us, to be peacemakers, to include those others exclude, to be Christ's light in this broken world. And maybe, just maybe, if we focus on who and whose we truly are, we just might be able to move past our invented identities to better reflect the love of Christ that's poured out among the whole wide world. Please join me in prayer. Lord, I pray that I would stop trying to find my identity in anything other than being your child and a citizen in your kingdom. Thank you for this amazing grace in my life. Lord, help me see the moment I start placing my identity in something else, my affiliations, my family, my career, my accomplishments, my gifts and talents. Help me in those moments to remember that all of those things, even though they are good gifts, will never satisfy me the way that you will. Help me keep you before you, help me keep you before me in all things. And help me to see you in all of your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Now join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. May the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine on your path. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Be well, be safe.